Good app. Good evening, Temple of Faith. I pray that you are having a blessed afternoon. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. First of all, Happy New Year to all of you who are joining us. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Before we go any further, I want to give honor to our pastor, Pastor Gary Bush and his wife, First Lady Sandra Bush, and to each of you who are assembled on tonight. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to prayer and we will go further into our word. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share. We thank you for this privilege of seeing another day. We thank you for this new year. God, you've been great to us and you've been kind. We thank you for how you've shown us your compassion and your favor and your love. God, we ask that you would bless what I have prepared. I ask that you would bless the hearts who are here to receive. And I ask that you would speak through me the word that you have given me and that you would give it with clarity, impartation, and with provision for what they are needful, what they are needing of. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this month, we're going to be focusing on Acts, which is the birth of the church. We're focusing this entire first month of January on the book of Acts to focus in on the church and to focus in what the church was doing after Jesus had resurrected from the grave. If you say the book of Acts is a very interesting book, it talks about the great exploits of the apostles, of many things they did, many things they encountered, and it also focuses on the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so I wanted to title this series on the book of Acts, I call it the Turning the World Upside Down. Again, it's called Turning the World Upside Down as found in Acts 17 verse 6, which says, these that have turned the world upside down are come here there also. And if you say the context, it was talking about how the disciples had gone out and spread the gospel and they was changing the religious norms of that day. And so uh, week one, we want to focus on the gift of the spirit. That's going to be the focus and the title of this week's lesson is the gift of the spirit. And we're going to be focusing primarily on the empowerment of the spirit and how it, excuse me, how it propels us to live a bold and courageous life in Christ Jesus. And so again, I want to give you some context on the book of Acts. The book of Acts focuses on the birth of the New Testament church after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As I mentioned, the church that became that would become a global in its outreach, it was birthed through the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And subsequently after that day, the apostles and believers who were assembled became more zealous in their witnessing and spreading of the gospel to various countries in spite of the religious customs, as I mentioned, persecution and abandonment from their loved ones. They became zealous. They became uh, very passionate about spreading the gospel in spite of their circumstances and the conflicts they would face. Uh, this book also details the effective and transformational power and work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers and the communities that surrounded them. And so I wanted to focus in on a few passages of scriptures. The book of Acts has 28 chapters, and so I tried to summarize seven chapters in this lesson, but it's, I can't give you all the context, but I want to inform you or encourage you that it is filled with much knowledge and inspiration. And I want to encourage you as we go through this lesson to study on your own and to read for yourself so that God would give you a word directly to you and he would encourage you. But Again, I'm going to look at Acts, the first chapter, and starting with the first few verses, just to get some context and to provide a background on what's going on. And it says, The former treaties I have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commands unto the apostles whom they had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after this after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he ye have heard of me for john truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying lord Will, that, will thou at this time restore the kingdom of heaven? 
we saw, excuse me, we saw again the kingdom of Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so that's our background scripture for this lesson. We're focusing again on Acts and in those in these particular passages or these scriptures we find that Jesus was telling them that it was not for them to know when he would restore the kingdom of Israel, but he told them to wait. And, to the, and then after he told them to wait, he said they would receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon them. And so again, the book of Acts is written by Luke, who was a physician, and he's detailing uh, what is to come. He's giving them context of what has happened. And so at this point of the scripture, the, the apostles had already seen and witnessed the resurrection power of Jesus Christ from him raising from the dead. But at this time, they was increasingly fearful because they was uh, and coming about with much persecution. Uh, they was fearful because they was, if they was to be seen at that time, they would face uh, imprisonment or challenges with the, the, the government, the Roman government, but also with the church and the Sadducees or the Pharisees at the time. In, in short, the Jews at that time. And so uh, because of the fear, because they were uh, persecuting or persecuting, excuse me, persecuting them because of what the resurrection had occurred in that city, in that um, environment, they were fearful because they did not want to face persecution because the rising of Jesus proved that he was the son of God and they did not want people to focus on that. So they was trying to kill the noise they was trying to hinder them from that message being preached and expanding the gospel to other people so that they would have as many believers in Judaism but it would give more attention to the believers and to those who believe in Christ and so I want to move forward I don't want to spend too much time there but they was very fearful and so they needed a power that's why the Lord had told them that they would receive power after the Holy Ghost had come upon them and it would enable them to be witnesses. Now let's focus in on Pentecost in Acts 2, the first to the fourth verse, and it says this, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And when they appeared unto them, clo and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and then sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So again, before this happened, they were fearful. They were uncertain of what was going to happen to them because of the threats of the government, and they were uncertain of what their future would hold. And so the day of Pentecost comes, they're filled with the Spirit, and they speak in other tongues. And as you've studied that, Past the scriptures, they begin to speak and glorify God with those tongues. But people begin to hear them who were of different nationalities, and they understood what they were saying in their language, in their um, their native language. Even though they weren't of that nationality, they began to speak in a different language that the other nationalities of those around them understood. And so it gave them influence with those people. And some people criticize, again, you see as you study the scriptures and you look through that chapter, people was criticizing them and said they were drunk because of the time of day. But Peter stood up and testified and preached to the church. And he, made, he gave clarity to what was happening with Pentecost. And so because of his preaching, as I study, it says 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. And the Lord continued to add to the church daily because of that experience with the Holy Ghost and that boldness for Peter to preach in spite of the opposition or the persecution he may face he still preached the gospel with boldness and clarity and because of that 3,000 souls were baptized and was added to the church as we go through the various chapters we see that in the third chapter Peter and John go to the temple of prayer and he heals a lame man and again it spreads the fame and it gives an opportunity for people to believe on the name of Christ because they witnessed an actual miracle outside of the life of Jesus. So they saw everyday people like you and I, or men, regular people, shall I say, like you and I, with that power that they experienced from Jesus. 
And so as we move forward in chapter four, it talks about, again, the Sadducees are becoming upset because of what's happening. They're threatening uh, their customs and their norms and people are being drawn to Peter and being drawn to the gospel. But consequently, because they're being drawn to the gospel, they're being drawn away from the customs and the practices of Judaism. So they was feeling threatened. So they want to control the spread of the gospel but Peter still stood up in this chapter, chapter four, and it says 5,000 this time was saved. So if you look at that, that's a total, if you're calculating, of 8,000 at the minimum. And so the gospel is being expanded. The gospel is reaching people. And because of this, again, the Jews are feeling threatened. And so in verse 21 of chapter four, it talks about how they was threatening them to be punished. So they're, they're experiencing all types of threats in the future chapters, they're going to experience the actual persecution. Uh, as I read, Stephen was stoned because of his, uh, who Stephen was a deacon. And you read that in chapter 6, he was appointed to govern the affairs of the church, but he was filled with boldness, and he preached the word of God with power. And it, again, increased the number of believers in the city of Jerusalem. But because of his preaching, the people was upset. The Sadducees were upset. Uh, upset excuse me and they stoned him to death so you see because of the gospel because of the message of Jesus it does bring challenge in and of itself it does cause people to be upset with you and it causes those who are not believers to find offense with you just because of what you believe and because they were going to encounter all types of suffering such as persecution as I mentioned the persecution would include flogging which is being beaten unmercifully being thrown into prison being uh, hanged upside down they would be um, killed and slaughtered for the name of Christ because they believed in Jesus Christ and they was going to stand fast in their testimony they would face this persecution because again the Sadducees were upset that they would lose control of the people and they wanted to control the dynamic but God knew that all the while and that's why he gave them the Holy Ghost which equipped them to be powerful again as you look before the receiving of the Holy Ghost, they were fearful, they was uncertain, and they were insecure about their future. But when they received the Holy Ghost, they dropped that fear and that experience of um, being uncertain or afraid, and they moved in the power of the Holy Ghost. And because of that, they were empowered to live a life that was full of courage. And they were empowered to live a life of preaching the gospel boldly, boldly, excuse me, and to live effectively the ministry that God had given them. So as we, and I'm going to be brief, as we we're studying this, we have to take a self-reflection about how the Holy Ghost is to be operated in our life. It's not just about the speaking in tongues. I want to encourage you that it's not just about the physical or, excuse me, the outside expression, but it's about the inward possession. I want to say that again. It's not about the outward expression, but it's about the inward possession of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost should not just be limited to the expression of speaking in tongues or the expression of being exuberant in your worship, but it should also be identified in your inward possession, such as your convictions, and your convictions should align your behavior to be centered in Christ and that you operate in power and in, and in integrity. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me slow down. So we have to focus on the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is to equip us to be bold witnesses. The scripture tells us clearly that you would be my witnesses into Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. That should be our first focus is how effective are we living in today's times? As you're realizing in 2022, we've been in a pandemic for going on two years in a few months. And as you realize that, we've also been facing economic uncertainty, political uprising. Uh, we saw that the Capitol building was stormed last year. There's so much confusion. And then we also have the racial profiling and police brutality. There's so much that we're facing that could be threatening our peace of mind and that can keep us in a state of fear. But the Holy Ghost should live inside of you and it should equip you to be courageous. It should equip you to be an overcomer and it should equip you to be steadfast in your faith as you go through the book of acts and we're going to be talking more in the weeks to come about the exploits that they did but they were steadfast in their profession and in their beliefs and and because of that they were steadfast in the actions and the things that they did for christ so i want to challenge you again as you look at the times we're facing we're not able 
to assemble ourselves as we once were with the regular uh, norms that we had in place. We didn't have to be distant and restricted in our um, connection with each other and even with our coverings on our face. We didn't have that. But because of what's going on, the pandemic has allowed us to become more isolated and it has allowed us to become more distracted from the things of God. The enemy has challenged the believer's beliefs. The, the enemy has challenged the believer's convictions and their standards and their, their ability to stand up for Christ. But just like in the book of Acts, we find that they were challenged as well. They were threatened to be um, beaten and to be taken into prison and to be uh, abused for the sake of Christ. But they did not allow the challenge or the threatenings to hold them back from what they were supposed to do. So I want to challenge you at the beginning of this year of 2022, this first Wednesday of the year, to not let anything separate you from the love of Christ, to actually draw closer to God in this season. This Bible is designed to bring us closer to God. It's not designed just to bring us closer to the building, but the building of the church is just the building. I want to admonish you that this is about the church, the book of Acts, but I want to admonish you that you are the church. It's not just the brick and mortar. The Bible says we are the temples of God. Once we receive Christ, we become the temple of God. So this message is personal. It's to challenge you to grow in your faith, to be steadfast, to be bold, to stand up for your convictions and your beliefs, to stand up and to do the ministry God has assigned you. This text talks about evangelism and we are to be living epistles of men, as the scripture says. So we have to be uh, consistent in our pursuit of evangelizing effectively with our words, but also more importantly with our lives. And so again, I want to encourage you, if we're gonna talk more about how the church expanded, uh, it talks about how the church was added to daily. We should be doing the same work as believers of Christ. It's not just the pastor's job. It's not just the preacher's job or those who are consistent in church. It's all of our jobs to expand the gospel of Christ. It, he told us to be witnesses. And so we must be mindful in the times that we live in that are challenging our belief system and are challenging our world views that we have to be consistent in evangelism. And my, I don't want to be uh, too long. I'm trying to watch my time, but I have, I have, I have plenty of time. But we have to be mindful that we must be courageous in witnessing and being bold in our stands for Christ. And so, again, as I come to a close, this chapter or these chapters, this book is filled with much context, much inspiration, much stories that will amaze you if you take the time to read. Uh, and I just want you to know that. In this first week, we want to focus on being bold and courageous in our walk with the Lord because we know that we are challenged with many things. Ironically, the Lord just dropped in my spirit. That that is the challenge. I mean, that is the theme of the church of this year. The challenge we face is what Presiding Bishop Sheard has given us. But just as we are challenged today, we see that God was faithful to the people of God in the New Testament of Acts, and He still expanded the church. So. My last word would be, what has God given you to do in 2022 or even in 2021? Was you faithful in that task? Did you allow fear to step in and to keep you back and to keep you from going forward in that thing that God has given you? Or have you allowed complacency or the status quo or just become a little uh, hindered or discouraged in what God has called you to do? I cannot tell you specifically what he's called you to do. I know what he's called me to do, but what has he challenged you to do? And we may not have the same assignment, but the thing is we must equally be faithful in the assignment that God has given us, whether that is to offer the ministry of helps or to um, be a witness. We're all to be witnesses, as I mentioned, but we must be mindful that time is running out and we have to be bold in our faith. We have to be zealous like the disciples and the apostles were. We have to be uh, consistent and we have to be aggressive in sharing our faith with the world because the world is at stake as you've witnessed this pandemic has taken away so many lives and so many people have gone astray but how many people did you witness to in this season how many people did you share the gospel with in your family how many people know that you're saved even see if you're if people are not even cognizant that there's a difference in your life your words won't be effective. So let this book of Acts challenge you to be effective, to be a witness, to give the word both spoken, but also in the way you live, how you treat people. I'm getting 
<laughs> off subject, but I know this must be the Holy Ghost uh, speaking through me. We have to be so mindful of how we live. And so we see in the book of Acts, and I'm going to detail that as we go further, how the church operated, how they conducted themselves. And because of how they conducted themselves is what drew what grew people what drew people, excuse me, holy Lord, what drew people to the church and what grew the church is how they saw the love and the compassion and the empathy they had for one another. And so for a personal a moment I will share that I understand and I'm going to end in a few moments that it is challenging sometimes we allow again what we see to prohibit us from going for I remember recently just very recently and uh, I'm sure someone who's watching knows what I'm talking about I was somewhat uh, hesitant to give what God had given me to do because of the position or because of uh, who the person was but we cannot allow what we see or what people status may be or what we feel inadequate whatever the case may be we can't allow ourselves to hinder what god has given us to do and so because we see in this text that the holy ghost will allow you to become bold and courageous in him and to share what he's given you i had to follow suit and not depend on myself but i had to depend on the enabling power of the holy spirit that dwells in me so i gave the message and thankfully that was received but i'm sharing this to let you know that you cannot rely on yourself because yourself will allow uh yourself yourself will allow you to see the negatives or the the lack that you have or your inadequacies your inefficiencies or just you would see the situations for whatever they may be that would make you feel hindered or discouraged in doing what god has called you to do but the spirit of god will empower you it will equip you to be effective in doing the task he has given in he has given us in evangelize so again i want to remind you to focus on the gift of the holy spirit it's not just about speaking in tongues it's not just about uh praise and worship but it's about the life you live in front of others so this will be the conclusion of tonight's bible study i cannot wait for the next few weeks we have i will give you some things to look forward for next week next week we, we will be talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, whichever you prefer. And we will focus more in on that ministry the Holy Ghost has given us. I pray you have enjoyed this message uh, in its entirety. If you have enjoyed this message, I ask that you would be a blessing to Temple of Faith. You can share your gifts with us, fi your financial gifts with us at Temple of Faith, Church of God in Christ on Giveify or Temple or on Cash App, excuse me, dollar sign Temple of Faith Church on Cash App. We pray that you would I pray about being a blessing to our ministry. We are excited about this year. We have several things planned, and our pastor is eagerly awaiting to initiate several programs for the church. So I want you to stay connected to this page, stay connected to the ministry. It will be a blessing to you. And again, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to meeting with you next week. God bless you.